What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to the channel. We are here to kick off back to back. Yesterday was the Raiders episode. Today I had nothing planned so I was like let's just keep on getting through the Raiders franchise because we're very close. We are here at the 2018 draft. We have two episodes left. 2019, 2020. Um, and we're close. We're so close. We are so close to being a Super Bowl winning team. And that's that's the end goal here. Um, you know, we, we looked and we left the last episode with you guys having a chance to tell me who we should draft in the first round here of the 2018 draft. We knew coming in that our team was pretty well built, but we could go, you know, interior line, get younger at center, look at a replacement at left guard. Oh, you flip to the defense. We're still needing an outside corner. We, you know, debatably, you know, Marcus May's normal dev trade is staring you and punching you right in the face. So, you know, there's a bunch of different ways that we could approach and improve this team. And I gave you guys a bunch of options, and I am going to show the most well-worded option for where we should go in the first round here in the 2018 draft. Saquon Barkley was still on the board, and from the sense of if this was the only rebuild we were ever doing, that was a flashback rebuild, I would say, hell yeah, we're going best player available. We're going to have a running back backfield of Saquon Barkley and Derrick Henry. However... Just doesn't make a whole lot of sense from the standpoint of our roster right now. Just have another run. They're not going to develop at the at the rate they both deserve to develop at. So, put it up. This was the, the number one player. Was to go and grab in honor of L. Davis. Look at that. 8.9 combine grade. Dante Jackson from LSU. 5'11", 175 pounds. Little slight, but he's an outside corner. You got speed like that. You are very much an outside corner. This will give us the, the ability to kick in Jackrabbit, Janoris Jenkins in the slot so that our outside corners are Dante Jackson. And of course, a man that I 100% don't forget his name, it's Darius Slay. So we're going to grab Dante Jackson here in the first round. And that's almost like a token first round pick for us so far. I remember Ryan Kerrigan was a 74 overall. I feel like that was Derrick Henry's rating as well. So it's just the nature of the beast. We got him number 51 in true value, getting him at pick 28. Little bit of a reach. Optimistic. Nah, I'm not going to say optimistic. I'm pretty sure we can expect, assume, that's most likely just going to be a star silver dev trait. But 74 with 95 speed, 91 acceleration, 95 agility, 78 man, 85 jumping. He has 95 strength because some of these players are still bugged for when I was editing the draft classes. I'll touch that up because I don't think we're ever going to see a 175 pound player with 95 strength again. But I'm happy with it, man. Dante Jackson, a big-time playmaker for the Raiders going forward on the outside. Coming into the second round, very easy pick. We're going to call this the Al Davis draft because he was a guy that was on our board for, like, even first-round consideration because when you look at our wide receivers right now, we have a 31-year-old Darius Hayward Bay. Golden Tate's not getting any younger. And Darren Waller still might make that switch to tight end. So height, weight, speed, six foot three, 200 pounds, the fastest 40-yard dash. Yeah. We grabbed DJ Shark out of L Like, that is an Oakland Raiders pick, if I've ever seen one. 72, luckily with the hidden dev. Not a little bit of a reach. 77 in true value, getting me a pick 60. 94 speed, 93 acceleration, 81 catch, 82 catch in traffic, 81 short route running. Deeper running should be way higher. Um, 93 jumping looks good. The release, the agility is fine. We have a playmaker on the perimeter with a dev trait. That's good. That's good. Get second round. Draft class recap. Fixed Dante Jackson's 95 seconds. But see what I was saying? I was talking about before. This draft class caused me so many headaches. And he's supposed to have 95 agility. And I gave him that. But he also, for whatever reason, had 95 strength. And if anyone out there has ever dealt with glitchy Madden draft classes, it, it's the worst. Like, I would go in for certain players. Like Dante Jackson, for example. He would have CI 64 awareness. Before I edited them, he would have 64 speed because everything was one off. I would edit this to, you know, the proper 95 speed. Give all the proper stats. And then when you'd save the player to be like, all right, put him in the draft class. Sometimes for whatever reason, nothing I did would save. And I would literally have to do it two times, three times for it to finally just enter in correct. Oh, it was oh, so bad. So if you are one of my Patreons, because all of these finely tuned draft classes are available on my Patreon. This is the one draft class that I'm probably going to have to revisit. I just want to get it done and get it 95% ready. And there's going to be the occasional hiccup like Dante Jackson having 95 strength. But if you are on my Patreon and you want to use these draft classes, every other one is perfect till this 2018 one. It's a little dicey. Uh, so we got DJ Chark in the second round. So we, we put a big importance on adding and infusing speed 
into our Raiders team. The third round here, we actually got to pick the Raiders made in real life, Arden Key. And when Arden Key was coming out of LSU, he was one of those guys that was like um, super high ceiling. Had I don't know if it was off the field. I don't know if it was work ethic or whatever, but he was supposed to be like a big hyped up edge rusher coming to LSU. But there was some risk. I mean, you, you know, project if you want to call him that. But we grabbed him in the third round. We got Sean Dion Hamilton from Alabama in the fourth round. 69 normal linebacker. We got Fosade Olukun, who is now a linebacker for the Falcons. But we brought him in as a strong safety, depth strong safety, 6'2", 229, 90 speed, 89 acceleration, 76 tackle, 83 hit power. Very intriguing playmaker. We got Deshaun Elliott of the University of Texas. And then Devil Hunter, Texas. I mean, we have a very, very old punter in a legend in Shane Leckler. But the best punter was still available on the board in our seventh round pick. So I was like, all right, let's just plan for the future. Michael Dixon. 77 hit a dev number 23, I think, in true value for this draft class. So, yeah, might be the end of Shane Leckler, even though I just feel obligated to keep on. So he might just have two punters on the roster until Shane Leckler retires. That's the respect I'll give him. So let's get into the year here. All right, let's take a look at our team here as we gear up for the 2018 season. Two years left. We have this year, actually three. Three more seasons to win a Super Bowl our team's looking good. We've now dipped below a 90 overall, which is a little bit concerning. But you look at it, and it's still all good in the hood. Derek Carr, 87 superstar. Derek Henry, 83 superstar. We have Golden Tate, 94 superstar. Darius Hayward Bay is starting to regress just a teeny bit, but still 92 superstar. One of the best deep threats in the NFL. Darren Waller there, 81 superstar. We just dropped DJ Shark. Offensive line is solid, 99 for Trent Williams. 96 Brandon Brooks. Maybe I would say Leal Collins, out of all the players on the offense, has probably been the least whelming. I mean, when we made that pick, I thought for sure it was like, oh, steal the draft, and we're going to have a franchise right tackle. I mean, you know, 79 star. He's 26. He's still, you know, he might cap out 84, 85, somewhere in that range. Defensively, this is where we're going to throw Dante Jackson on the outside with Darius Slay. We got Jack Rabbit on the defensive line. For sure, not going to go Randy Gregory over TJ Watt. T.J. Watt, Aaron Donald, Kawan Short, and Ryan Kerrigan make up a very, very dynamic front three. Uh, four, if we're not going to be in subsets. We run a lot of subsets. That's why Kawan Short doesn't have the great development, doesn't have the great stats. We're usually a down three. We got Shaq Thompson, Vontez Perfect, and Deion Jones for our linebacking course. Still the old veteran there, Thomas Howard. Honey Badger, 91 superstar at free safety. And at strong safety, yeah, we'll go Marcus May. See if we can capitalize on that normal dev. Get him a lot of playing time so that hopefully he will go up a dev trade. Special teams, Dixon. Oh, we can't do that just yet, can we? we Got to give Leckler at least one more year till he retires. Aguayo, Leckler, two superstars on special teams for a team that has always prioritized special teams in the Oakland Raiders. Let's win a Super Bowl. Why not this year? Why not this year? It's time to take a very short trip down memory lane here. We're at week four. We're not super hot. One and two is not great, but we have the 2020 draft class. And let's look here. 2019. It'd be the 2019 draft class, C4, and that's obvious. Uh, so taking a peek here, I mean, this is a draft where we had, uh, well, for a tie right now, start scouting by Nick Bosa. Uh, it, it's a stellar draft class for sure. Kyler Murray, Nick Bosa, Devin White. I mean, still, we're at, this is probably like the first cutoff of like, who knows? Who, like, we, we're seeing Rashawn Gary, who's kind of looked like a bust. He's now starting to break out. So I think for a lot of the opinions on these players, it might be too early to call any of them bust. Even for me as an Eagle fan, maybe it's still too early to call someone like Andre Dillard a bust because how much of an opportunity has he really had? I mean, looking at first rounders, Dwayne Haskins. Yeah, you probably could say Dwayne Haskins is, is the bust. I mean, Cleveland for all, at least for pick four for a top five pick has kind of been a bust, but it's a very interesting draft class. I'm going to scout some of my favorite players. Jeffrey Simmons has been an absolute beast for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, I hope we just show some respect to the Raiders here and just scout Josh Jacobs for you. But, uh, I mean, obviously DeAndre Baker could be considered a bust. LJ Collier, Caleb McGarry. Guys that have struggled, but there's still time for them to turn everything around. And in the, in the spirit of Al Davis, we'll get Montez Sweat scouted there as well. But for me, in terms of team, like our team is absolutely stacked. Again, we can look at interior on the offensive line. So that would be more so, you know, Jonah Williams could kick into guard. A lot of people thought that that's maybe his best spot. Uh, as far as actual guards, I mean, Elton Jenkins and Garrett Bradbury at center, those are probably going to be, and even Eric McCoy at center. Like, all those guys have capabilities of being able to kick out to guard. 
which could be an interesting play for us. But what I'm trying to say is, like, my team, we filled a really good squad. So we might not know where our immediate holes are going to be until it comes to free agency when we might have to make some tough decisions about who we have to assign, who we have to let go. Because you can see the little player profile there. We're going to have to negotiate a contract for Aaron Donald. There might not be as much money to go around later on in the season. So as we come out of the bye, I'm not sure when I'm going to hop in yet. It'll probably be a little bit later on in the season. But like we talked about, when we're more so focusing on last year's draft. A lot of us said, don't go safety because we think Marcus May will go up a dev trade. Well, here is our first scenario for this man. We can hold Devin to less than 200 passing yards or get Marcus May an interception, force fumble, TFL, or sack. That, that's totally in the cards. This is why we're talking right now. Aaron Donald, that's a, that's a bargain. 80 million bucks for Aaron Donald. Not even going to think twice. Trent Williams. Three-year deal. I, I don't think you're going to regress too, too bad. Ryan Kerrigan. Like, I want these guys, these big, pivotal, vital players that we've drafted that have developed very nicely. I want to try to keep them for the entirety of this rebuild when possible. This one's where it gets a little interesting. I don't know. I know there's probably a lot of people that like C4. When are you going to kick Darren Waller tight end? This could be the opportunity where we're not going to have a whole lot of money for shits and giggles and it's almost like we got to pick or choose do we want darren waller or do we want zach miller and we'll go darren waller right now he's currently our third wide receiver while dj chark develops as a rookie but i think just off the top of my head play next year we'll go chark at wide receiver will be one of our starters and we'll kick darren waller in too tight and for the rest of our contracts here i mean we could have some respect offers i mean we have shane luckler's replacement he's 42 it is what it is maybe thomas howard see if he wants to be a depth guy Lael collins should get himself a new deal uh does marcel reese want to re-up on a two on a one year he does that's cool he wants the gang want to be back here what about sam sitsatelli at center one year well, he wants a little bit more money and kiss my ass but hey aaron donald 80 million dollars you're laughing we lost the game against Denver, but Marcus May went up his dev trade as expected. So that was quite the gamble from you guys in the comment section, but it paid out. So I gambled near the end of the season. I was like, probably going to make the playoffs. That's when we can hop in and try to just get this thing started right out. I didn't know it was going to be the wild card. Once we got 8, 9, 10, 11 wins, I was like, maybe we'll get that five. But we got our third straight, I believe, AFC West title, which is, that's pretty cool for a Raiders organization. And we get right away to figure out who the best team is in the AFC West as we take on the 10-6 and six Denver Broncos in this lovely playoff bracket. We were the number three seed in the AFC. Hard work was done. Not good enough to get the two or the one. That is the Jets and the Steelers holding that responsibility. But we're on point right now. We're absolutely on point. We had a couple hidden devs from the draft class, which may be unveiled. Nope. Still nothing yet on DJ Chark, even though I think we're going to make an assumption that it's a star. Um... Jackson was a star, 79 star, but I mean, that he's fit in nicely on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, and Dixon, the punter, obviously did not play this year, so we're still waiting that. Statistically speaking, not amazing from Derek Carr, but not bad it's from 31st in yards. But when you have Derek Henry at running back, hopefully we're slowly switching more towards a run-first offense that closely resembles the Raiders in real life. Uh, but 34 touchdowns, 7 picks for Derek Carr is a hell of a stat line. Uh oof. Not even a 1,000 yards yet. Derrick Henry, two years in the NFL, still looking for his first 1,000-yard season. 9.50 and 7. Uh, getting vultured a little bit by Carson. And for sure, shit, Marcel Reese getting six touchdowns there. I ain't mad at it, but it's it's weird. No 1,000-yard receiver. Zach Miller, who we're actually letting go. 8.75 and 7. We have 7 and 9 for Darren Waller. So, you know, no, ew, that's not great regression there from Darius Hayward Bay. Defensively, Shaq Thompson, 104 tackles, two sacks, four picks. That's a great year. 12 sacks, 16 TFLs from Aaron Donald. A little bit of a dip in production there. Kawan Short, 11 sacks. I kind of threw a little bit of shade in when I was introducing the team. And he had his breakout year. Six and a half Kerrigan, six for TJ Watt. Four picks Thompson, four for Honey Badger. Interceptions are up for the squad, which I like to see a lot. But offensively, 30th in the NFL is not... Not where you want to be, but we have a top five defense, which is good. MVP went to Christian Ponder. Hey, you know, that's, that's the fun. Doing a series like this. Things like that happen. Uh, for individual awards, any Raiders that we can see. Jab at best. Let's go. Nothing. Not one thing from the AFC West champs. I guess we're just a strong team. When defense wins you games, you're probably not going to look the flashiest doing it. 
But we're going to hop in and try to throw a little sizzle in for the offensive side of the ball as we get into this wild card game at home hosting the 10-6 and six Denver Broncos. Let's see quickly just what this, what's the makeup of this Denver Broncos team? They have what? Trent Richardson, Gerald McCoy, Brandon Marshall, the receiver, Saquon Barkley, and Justin Tuck as their superstar X-Factors. Travis Kelsey, Desmond Trufant, Geno Atkins, Stephon Diggs, Jerry Evans, and Daryl Washington as a suit. So this is like a very, very good team, especially from ability standpoint. They're an 86 overall. We blow them out of the water in terms of overall team quality, but you never know. Haven't played Madden yet today. This is my first game coming in cold. That's always a prime opportunity to throw like five picks. Let's see what happens. Third and 17. Love hopping into this. But it's a prime opportunity just to throw a bomb. Throw a bomb or... Have that happen. I can't do a fucking thing. I think I've been sacked four times. This is this all pro? What happened? I don't have time. I, I, and then we fumbled it again. And this is brutal. This is absolutely brutal. All right, I have negative six yards. That's uh, that's where we're at. There we go. Got something going. Pass. I completed a pass. That might be the best highlight you see today. We have the tight end. Get up. Like this. Is, like someone went in on Madden side of things, conspiracy theory, and they're like, you know what? Let's keep it at say it's all pro, but it's actually going to be all mad because I cannot do a fucking thing. Oh, he's just beating my 99 left tackle like a drum. Sam Ocho up in Trent Williams' ass right now. Well, at least we now get to get to an offense where it's like, all right, Hail Mary time. Every play, it's going to be some version of a Hail Mary at least we got one of those here at Darius Hayward Bay. We're off of having negative six yards total offense so far. How is that the farthest Derek Carr can throw the ball? 30 yards. He's Drew Brees. I literally tap B to throw it deep to Darren Waller, who beat his man off press coverage, and Derek Carr with no pressure. Wasn't getting hit. Threw the ball. Can we get it? Can we get it? I want to get it. I got to get a replay list. There's something going on. They they snipped the balls off my quarterback. Their car has like 95 throw power. Look at this. Didn't get hit. Full wind up. How far does this ball go? Because we're, we're here, right? We're here. We're here. And we see this. Well, 80's covered. But look, 84. Darren Waller. Has a step on Trufant. Also, Trufant's six feet tall. Darren Waller's six six. Let's throw it in front of him. Let's throw it in front. So let's see how far the depth and distance we get on this Derek Carr bomb. All right, he's about the we'll say we'll say the 15 for round number's sake. Hail Mary barely gets across the 50. Are you telling me we don't have that kind of arm talent, Derek Carr? Clean pocket, full swing, full throwing motion, and we undershoot it 40, or what, 35 yards? 35-yard Hail Mary. If you haven't bought Madden 21 yet, don't. It's the worst Madden of all time. This will 100%. When we look back 10 years from now, 15 years from now, Madden 21 will be known as the worst Madden of all time. And we're enjoying it. We're, we got to embrace the memes because this is the worst Madden that's ever been made. So I couldn't do anything on offense. I just simmed the game out and we almost won it and then they didn't win it. Okay. Okay. Next fucking part of the video, please. Fuck, this game sucks! First thing in the offseason, gotta pay respect to a legend for this rebuild. Thomas Howard has announced his retirement after 13 years. Thank you for your service, sir. 
We enter free agency with really only one need, and that is center. And we have a big upgrade here, potentially Nick Mangold. However, I think with those three centers that we identified in the draft, Eric McCoy, you could look at Garrett Bradbury. We're going to get one of those two. So I think we just prioritize getting center in the draft, getting a center with a dev trade versus spending money in free agency. That money, that is very dwindling. You got to remember two years ago, we had over $100 million in salary cap. But now we're starting to resign all these good rookies that we're drafting. So I think it's more of a priority to continue to draft well and keep our talent in-house than it is to land a veteran that is only for a short-term gain on the free agency market. Now, next year, if things start getting a little shaky, we only have one year left of the rebuild and we're not quite there for a Super Bowl contender, then we can look at splurging whatever remaining salary cap we have into free agency to try to improve this team for a one-year run. All right, we're doing the draft this time. We know our needs. We got to get a center. We need someone on the interior of the offensive line. I'm going to look at all these other names. Elton Jenkins, you're our guy. Don't eat. We need a brand new center. 70 hidden dev. Our current center, Isaac St. Miles, is 74 normal. 70 hidden dev. I'll take that every day of the week. Number 58 in true value, getting him at 24. He's an absolute beast. Can play everywhere on the offensive line. Great pick for the Raiders. So we'll finish off this episode with the draft summary. I will say right now, if you are checking out this video, you have yet to vote on the poll I made a channel community poll talking about the future of this series in terms of how it's presented versus um, essentially what we've done for every other team doing single year videos or moving back and shifting to a traditional one, you know, one big meal of a video. I want you guys to vote on that. I want you guys to have your voices be heard. For our draft class, it was, I mean, we just kind of all blinders on bringing in an interior lineman and Elton Jenkins, absolute beast. I'm very, very happy with that selection. Uh, I reached the chance to bring in a, you know, reunite another Raider, Max Crosby, who might be their best defensive end right now. He's a 69 out of Eastern Michigan. I get Michael Dieter on the offensive line, 64. Dre Greenlaw, 68, hit in depth. Pretty solid linebacker there for the San Francisco 49ers, so brought that in for depth. Jaquan Johnson, 66, normal. We get Nate Herbig, 60, normal. And we get our third hit in depth of the draft in the seventh round, drafting Preston Williams out of Colorado State. Now he's a member of the Miami Dolphins. But a 64 hidden dev there for a big-bodied wide receiver. So a solid draft class. Very importantly, landing a brand new center that can anchor this offensive line for the final two years of this rebuild. It's going to be tough. It's going to be good, though. We're going to find a way to win. We're going to find a way to endure. And we're going to find a way to get back into the playoffs and just scrap every little bit of whatever that game was against the Denver Broncos in the first round of the wildcard playoffs. Out of our brains. It never happened. It didn't exist. But I want men in black, all that shit. We're good. But that'll do it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching. Make sure you vote on how you want to see these videos. You can just let me know in the comment section below. I'm always looking at the comments anyways. But it's just easier to get it all quantified into a poll format on the channel. Uh, and I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. I think tomorrow will be another episode of the Eagles franchise. And then we might have some draft talk, something like that on the videos uh, as well. We will just leave a closing. I did post the first patreon exclusive mock draft yesterday over on the patreon so if you haven't if you've been on the fence about checking it out go check it out right now and see if that's something you'd like to be interested in in supporting the channel but in terms of supporting the channel things that don't cost money subscribe it's first time stopping by thumbs up like button that's all i need right the likes and thumbs up and stuff oh my god i can't believe how bad this game is see you guys in the next one peace out